You've probably all seen those memes of powerlifters waiting hours before they hit their lift again. Hey man, how many sets you got? Bro, I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm gonna be here at least another three hours. And often this graph is used to determine your rest times. But do powerlifters need to wait so long or are they just lazy? And is this graph accurate or is there a better way to approach this? I'll already tell you a little secret. Those taxing exercises like squats and deadlifts where you're thinking about riding your last wheel after finishing a set will require more rest time than for example weighted dips even though both of them are compact movements and should be in the same category on our graph. On top of that your age and sex might also have an effect on your rest times. And yes I am sick again just like in my last video I got better but now now I'm sick again, so yeah, sorry if my voice sounds a little weird. And please make sure to watch the entire video because otherwise you really might make some wrong conclusions. It's not for me, but it's for you, so you don't end up wasting time in the gym. Now this one study found that resting up to 8 minutes allowed subjects to increase their volume when they were told to do 4 sets on the bench press with 80% of their one rep. Max. Now volume is basically the reps times sets times load and the more volume generally the more muscle growth. And the 8 minute rest group was able to keep the reps and load constant as opposed to the group who rested 5 minutes. They had to change either their weight or their reps. And here is already a big problem that comes up with this study and that is efficiency. If you're able to still lift slightly more weight by doing a slight increase in volume but you have to rest three extra minutes for it, you probably could have done an extra set and accumulate more volume and the group that rested about eight minutes did take 12 minutes more to complete their training of just four sets let alone an entire workout. Ain't nobody got time for that. And yes, in theory, if you have an entire day to train, resting 8 minutes between sets is probably going to be slightly better, but not even that significant in the long run. Now let's take a look at it like this. It can only take a couple of minutes to get back from zero to about 90% of your performance. So an increase of 90% in, for example, two minutes. But it would maybe take six or more minutes to get to 99%, making the two minutes spent resting more efficient than those six extra minutes. And this makes it so that we're able to do almost three times more volume in about the same time frame. That means that in fact you're going to need to possibly embrace a small decrease in performance to get the best time to stimulus ratio. By the way, these numbers and percentages are rather lucrative, I just made them up to bring my point across. And the idea also comes from this book, Scientific Principles of Hypertrophy Training. I'll leave a link in the description for those interested to purchase it. Now because they were rather lucrative numbers, let's try to take a practical look at what an example numbers might be. Now when looking at a couple of studies and one article it becomes quite clear that there need to be made a few distinctions. First of all the graph often displayed does have some truth to it. A review article found that about three to five minutes of rest does seem to be optimal for experienced lifters when it comes to strength training. Also mentioning that rest intervals shorter than one minute results in slightly better muscular endurance. Meaning that for for hypertrophy reasons the sweet spot might be somewhere in the middle. But this is looking at it with a simplistic point of view. Because when we take a look at another systematic review, these rest times seem to have some vague lines. Because untrained individuals were able to get about the same results as trained ones with shorter rest periods, their conclusion was that 2 minutes does seem to be about the minimum of rest time for strength training. But shorter rest periods will also see a robust increase in strength. One article also notes that it is important to make a distinction between age and sex when prescribing rest times. Because numerous studies show that the elderly require less rest time in between sets to fully recover. And between men and women, well, women seem to require less rest time in between sets to recover simply because of anatomical and physiological differences like possibly the fiber type distribution 
perfusion and calcium uptake. And the point that I am trying to get across is that maybe we need to take a step away from the general graph that we're using to make general recommendations which are absolute for everyone because every individual is different and needs individual recommendations. There are at the moment simply too many variables and too few studies looking at these independent variables to make a solid graph for every group. That being said, I still think that we should use this graph as a general guideline and not throw it away completely. One reason being that otherwise you might get confused on how much you should actually rest. So having a starting point and then altering is a good idea. Just keep the things I mentioned earlier about sex, age and training experience in mind to alter the graph a bit to your needs. Now how do we make this more practical? Well first we need to make a distinction between three types of fatigue. You've got cardiovascular fatigue which basically means that you're out of breath like for example after a set of heavy deadlifts or squats. You've also got target muscle fatigue which can be best described as feeling a burning sensation in the muscle that you're trying to target like for example when doing a set of bicep curls and lastly you got nervous system fatigue which is a bit less easy to notice but this will mostly apply to strength training. It's basically your brain being being unable to fire up as much muscle fibers as before because of spinal fluid and such. And by the way, there is also a distinction between, for example, compound movements, isolation exercises and all of the different exercises. But with the following checklist I'm about to show you, you won't have to worry about it too much. Now first I will make a small checklist for hypertrophy training then for strength training but since most programs do include both higher and lower rep ranges I think it's best for you to listen to both. And for the endurance athletes start with one minute and you can even gradually try to lower that amount. In this research article on sprinters they noticed that humans are rather good at estimating when their performance is rather okay again to start with sprints. And I believe that we can sort of apply this to strength training as well. Because this will be our cardiovascular fatigue, so this is checkpoint 1. Is your breathing back to relatively normal? Note that your breathing tempo will always stay a little elevated during training. Secondly, is your target muscle recovered? If you're still feeling that awful burn and feel it's hard to move, you might want to rest a little longer. And thirdly, the nervous system fatigue is less applicable to hypertrophy, but if you, for example, do six reps of an exercise, you might not have heavy breathing or a burning sensation. And here it's probably going to be best to just stick to the recommended rest times, adding or subtracting a couple of seconds or minutes depending on your age, sex and training experience. And if these three things are okay, you can probably start again with your exercise. Now for strength, training the first two types of fatigue will be less important but it's still good to go over them but most of the time you won't really have too much trouble with it but it's a bit harder to notice the muscular fatigue a good example of this is when you try to do a one rep mix but failed while pushing yourself very hard and suddenly after two minutes you feel okay but if you try to lift again you're not going to get movement whatsoever. And another study notes that using higher loads seems to be very important for strength training so maybe waiting a little longer than usual might actually be beneficial like some power lifters often do in the gym. If you have the time resting longer than five minutes will probably be more beneficial but in the real world well you're probably going to look at about four to five minutes. But if you're a true bro and you never do cardio that sounds like it can be put on a shirt. A true bro never does cardio. Anyway, <laughs> if you always have to rest longer than three minutes on every exercise because you're out of breath, you might want to start earlier and train 
your endurance because an earlier mentioned review does note that you can adapt to it slowly over time. So purposefully altering that rest time can be a viable strategy. I would also try to keep your rest times for both hypertrophy and strength training about the same throughout your workout program unless you're trying to purposefully alter them for your cardiovascular endurance. So timing your sets but trying to find for yourself what exercises require more or less rest time between sets. And probably five minutes is about the maximum rest time for time efficiency. This is a quick summary of what I mentioned in my video, so make sure to screenshot it and go over it from time to time to remind you on what to look out for. I'll leave these small checklists as a PNG file as well in the link in the description down below. By the way, this is part of my full video series showing you how to make your own training program from scratch to finally build up to a full body workout. So make sure to watch this video for the best possible science-based warm-up for performance and this one for using RPE. Make sure to subscribe for more helpful tips and smash that like button if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys later.